And we're back, gamers. This is SKS, and let's continue to play Sid Meier's Colonization, the 1994 version. As you could tell, our English caravel has made it across the big Atlantic Ocean, and we're ready to start playing the game. And we can cover a lot of things here. You start out with two units. Based on the difficulty, they'll go from just being regular soldiers to veteran sentries, which I have now, or regular pioneers or hardy pioneers I have the regular pioneers so it kind of varies with each country it just all depends now there's a lot of things we could cover up here with the game view orders report trade and the colonizopedia or colonize colonize opedia as we'll call it totally different than the civilization one but like I said the, the object of this game is totally different um, you don't produce everything in your colonies at the start you have to actually deal with um, your home country. So in our case, where we're English, we deal with, uh, you know, the European country of England. So you go to European status, and we can see here London, England. Spring 1492. You deal with all of your goods down here. Like, at first we'll be buying a lot of tools, and we'll be trying to build up our colonies. Now... I've already decided on the uh, fact that I'm going to kind of spread out faster than I normally do just for this Let's Play, and hopefully that will make it, uh, you know, the product of the game go a little faster and you all can see a little difference in how the game can be played. Because I know a lot of people have not seen this game before, so I like to introduce things like that. I've, I've learned a lot of other games by watching people like the Seas Crab and Jeff Major, Grimmeth and all them, so you just want to continue to build, you know, there's a lot of games out there, so if I could show you one way to play it and then you go and play it another way, that's excellent. Like, I, I used to beat this game by only having one colony, and you can call that narcissistic or whatever, that just meant that I was better than the computer. But, we'll deal more with this screen later on, so let's go to exit, and what we want to do is come over here and, and try to put our first colony we want to stay away from Arawak Indians because they like to attack and they can really mess up your your chances for declaring independence because they will attack you right down during the middle of your your revolutionary war, your war for independence. But um, we've also got to watch out for other countries and, like I said, find a suitable place for these colonies that I want to build. My goal is to have at least five colonies, maybe more. It just depends how I feel. I'm feeling a bit spiteful right now because I just know the French are lurking out there and, and, and they're, they're wanting to kill me. They just they want to mess with me. They will put a city right next to me just so I have to stare at their smug French bastard faces. So, if you're French and you don't like that statement, deal with it. I don't care. So let's continue on and we'll see if we can find land over this way. Obviously, we're a lot farther from land. It, it randomizes the map when you do start a new world, so it's always different every time. Let's, oh, here's a fishing thing and lumber. This could actually be a good location with discovery of the new world here. And you never just want to land. We're not going to call it New England. No. We have discovered New Awesome. So what you want to do is kind of survey the land. Like this is swamp over here to this side. This is actually two awesome places. If we could, if this was like land right here, you might want to put a, a colony right there so you could have both your lumber so you could produce things and fish. But the way that this game works, I'm either going to hit up or I'm going to hit right, and there's going to be an Indian village there. That's just, that's usually just how it works out. So we could be lucky. All right. Well, we found out that right now there's a, there's actually water here, so you never want to put a city on top of the lumber square because this game has a glitch in it that I remember that usually your city will produce the food on the land that it's on, the colony, I mean, excuse me. Food, a uh, mineral, and then if you have a special square there, it will grow that as well, except with lumber. It will not cut lumber down because obviously if you put a colony there, you've cut down all the trees on that square. Here's another fish. So this might actually be a good location. Well, there's some Indians here. Let's see if we can tell what kind. They are Iroquois. They are actually pretty good trading. So I'm going to take a chance here and wake my soldier up and have him go right here. And then we will continue surveying this. In case it's just a, an island, that could be problems. And they're already figuring out well, what's this boat. Maybe we have to kill some people. 
But you don't want to land on a spot that's too small. Oh, well, here's some minerals right here. This might actually be another good place to put a colony. So we'll just go up here. We are going to build right here. Jamestown. Hmm. I think we will change that. But what will we change it to? Hmm. You can always change these later on, but I just let's let's be totally We'll call it the I hate French colony. Alright, so we're building a colony. Mr. The Bounty Man is out there cutting down a tree, and we are getting ready. So, you usually want to use your soldier to do your first, uh, you want to use your soldier to do your first city, because if he's out wandering around and searching, it will actually make the Indians become nervous, and they'll get these little exclamation marks on them. They go from green to blue to orange to red, and of course, when they get to red or orange, they will be likely to attack you. So it's just better to do this. Now, we can already tell that he's already making tin lumber in the location. We can't fish yet for food, but... We can build docks, and you can see here, units present, and you go down here and you can, you can, usually docks is the first thing. Here's a list of the things you want to buy. First two things you always want to put in every colony, docks and a warehouse. Later we'll expand on, uh, most of these are population based, so you have to get a certain amount of population. I'm actually going to change this right now, while he is making tin wood and I need a lot of wood. I'm going to switch him over, let's see, oops. There we go. I'm going to have him make Liberty Bells. Because right now we only have one colonist. But when I build my other colony, it will say two. And if you can actually, at the first of the game, get your colonist to produce Liberty Bells and you go 50%, you will eliminate one of the other European countries. And I just pray to God that I can eliminate the French. That is my main goal. So while this colony is actually producing three food, so it's going to grow because each person eats two food, as you can tell here. Two food are used, one is extra, we're producing one cross, and now four liberty bells. We also get the bonus of the two furs. We'll just sell those eventually to Europe. So, we're going to put this, I hate French, is going to stay right here. And we will go work on the other place. I really want this river here that's great for producing food. I would actually like to put the city right there if I can. The Indians don't look very happy with me being here. Season Scouts, that is something awesome to have. You can make them enter Indian villages and they will tell you their specific units. And you can take free colonists and send them to that city. And you can actually have them learn that skill. We'll go into that more later. So let's put our dude with the big hat away. Alright, the Continental Congress will expand during its next session. Your Excellency, which Founding Father shall we appoint as its next member? Founding Fathers are very important on this game. Usually you want to go with whatever, if you're the Spanish, you want to go with military Founding Fathers. If you're French, you want to go with the peaceful ones, like Pocahontas, you know, is already going to have relations with the Indians. But uh, we'll just go through here and I'll show you what each of these uh, Founding Fathers bonuses they bring. Alright. Stuvescent, uh, blah blah blah, allows construction of the custom house in your colonies, which can streamline trade with Europe and allows European trade during the revolution. What that does is, if you have a custom house built later on in the game, like we in America, we had the Boston Tea Party. We no longer could trade tea with them. In this game, when you have a tea party, the king, what has happened is he will come through and he will. He will say, kiss the pinky ring and accept a 5% tax on tools. At the first of the game, you're going to say, okay, and you'll kiss it. But then later in the game, you're going to be like, screw you, and you're going to have a tools party. You'll dump all your tools over, and from then on, you cannot trade with Europe, or in our case, London, for those tools. So what will happen is, you build this custom house, and you can still trade those goods. Alright. Sur de la Salle. LaSalle gives all existing and future colonies a stockade when the population of the colony reaches three. That is a really good one. I have went with that a lot because it saves you a lot of lumber and a lot of work at the start of the game. Alright. Let's see who else we have. Paul Revere. When a colony with no standing soldiers is attacked, a colonist automatically takes up any stockpiled muskets in defense of the colony. This is good later on in the game. 
we don't really need that now because I'm going to try not to have my colonies unprotected. But near the first of the game, they always will be. Pocahontas uh, joins Contest. All tension levels between you and the natives are reduced to content, and all Indian alarm is generated half as fast. Usually, you would use Pocahontas with the Spanish. You go through and you raid all the Indians you can, and then you bring Pocahontas in, and it resets everything to content. You can also do that toward the end of the game if you want bonus and score. I remember doing that. But usually I like to live at peace. Alright, William Brewster. Uh, no more criminals or servants appear in the docks, and you select which immigrant the recruitment pool will move close to the docks. This is actually really important. Of all the ones between him... Between he and Sur de la Salle... I'm really bent, but I think early on I want to be able to pick who goes to the front of the docks. Because what happens is there's a pool and there'll be three, and the game randomly chooses which one will go up ready to come across when your cross is produced. But being England, since our crosses are going to produce, you know, two-thirds more, uh, I'm going to actually pick him so we'll be able to know what's going to happen. And I think I'm just going to make the decision to drop my pioneer here. And we will move on up the coast and see what else is going on. The Indians will eventually approach us. Hopefully they're going to be peaceful with us and we'll be happy trading with them. As you can see, they've proved up here or moved up here. Somehow we're back on a boat, even though I was walking on the land. The Iroquois tribe welcomes you. We are a glorious nation of eight villages. To celebrate our friendship, we generously offer you the land you now occupy as a gift. Will you accept our treaty and live with us in peace and brothers? Yes, we will. I usually like being near the Iroquois. They will defend you when other towns, uh, when other, uh, not towns, but uh, other countries try to mess with you, they will come to your aid. So we will do that. The Iroquois welcome peace with our brothers of the English. Let us smoke a peace pipe to celebrate our perpetual friendship. Yes, while doing drugs with your neighbors, you will always be good friends. As long as they don't s steal my TV. Uh, we hope that you soon visit and send your wagon trains to trade with us. All right. Now I'm sitting here debating what do I want more. I think I'm going to go ahead and send him back to England. There's the Dutch. I hope they don't have colonies up here. Because right now I'm have to think, if I build a city right where I'm at, I will have these minerals, I will have this copper ore, and I will have rivers. But I will also have this scrub forest. I think I'm going to go ahead and build it here. Part of it, no, it won't be blocked off because we're not near the... We're not near the Indians enough. Um, we will name this Fort Boob. Alright. So this person is producing furs, but I think we are going to have to make money. So let's see what we can do here. One of one silver. Can we do silver in the hills? No. So we will gain silver because silver sells for a lot of money. Alright, so right now we have Fort Boob, let me get this to scroll down a little bit, turn will move, Fort Boob and I Hate French Cities are going well, um, I will hopefully pick up a seasoned scout once our boat hits London and we'll bring him back and I'll show you how you get more money really quick in this game all right there it is it, it arrived in London let's see if we could pick up anything else farmers servants I don't think I want to pick up anybody just well no not yet we're going to bring him back ahead for the new world and we will end that turn, and gamers, it, it, we are running low on time, so I will go ahead and put a close to this. The Iroquois will have brought us six tobacco. I'm sure they love the town name to give us that. But we will stop right there, 
and hopefully you'll join me next time for the next installment of Let's Play Colonization. So join us next time, gamers. This is SKS, signing out.